ISIS tightening its stranglehold on Middle Eastern oil reserves, currently selling upwards of 40,000 barrels a day on the black market. The jihadist group suspected to be in control of seven oil fields and two refineries in northern Iraq, allowing them to rake in an estimated $730 million a year from oil alone. It is a staggering influx of cash and more than enough to move ISIS beyond Iraq. Here now, Ken Mahoney of Mahoney Asset Management. We have Jack Howe with us as well, uh, Barron's senior editor, and James Frischling, who is the president of New Oak. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Jack, let me start with you, because this is really a staggering development. Um, this is in addition to the 60% of Syrian oil fields that it's reported ISIS also controls. Yeah, it's a lot of money, and, and, and you would think it, it's clear here that something is going to have to be done to stop that. And if something must be done, then every week that goes by that we don't do something, they get stronger and richer. So you yeah. would hope that it comes sooner rather than later. This is a lot of money. I mean, the show's called Money, so that's the part of the story that we're really focused on here. And, and you look at one of their you know, main sources of revenue is kidnapping, and now we hear that they have so much oil under their, their control, and there's really no way. I mean, oil is so fungible. You don't really know what oil you're getting, right? You know, this, this whole thing is just crazy, and it's hard to watch this day after day. Like, you're right. We feel like we have to do something. You can't do sanctions. That, you know, they're not reasonable type of people. They don't value life the way we value life. And you're dealing with people that you can't even compromise with because there's nothing to compromise here. Yeah. James? No, I, uh, I, I continue to think that, that this has to be dealt with for, far more aggressively. And, but again, th as Ken said, you can't negotiate. Yeah. So the, the fact is I... Um, I, I I don't wish the president well, right? So I wish him well, but I don't yeah. see how he's going to address this issue uh, without taking more action. Yeah. You it's a tough situation. You can't just wage war from the air without people fighting with you on the ground. People on the ground won't fight until they have a coherent government that they believe they can fight for. So, so it's really kind of a catch-22 situation. Yeah. You need a better government there in order to get people to rise and Absolutely. fight. Absolutely. All right, Fed Chair Janet Yellen not tipping her hand with her remarks in Jackson Hole today, claiming there is, quote, no simple recipe on interest rate hikes and expressing some doubt about the jobs recovery. Her comments, leaving the bulls wanting more, but you know what? They have had quite a run. They don't have anything to complain about. The S&P hit its 28th record close of 2014. Not everyone is getting in on the fun. So here's an interesting fact. Less than 10% of S&P stocks reached a 52-week high. Ken, what do you think about that? I mean, it's the whole broader market is not necessarily participating in this. It's really specific stocks that are driving it harder. What does yeah, that tell seen, you? We've seen some pretty bad breath, what you're talking about. You know, this started yeah. about two months ago. Actually, if you look at the charts, Malaysian airline crash started this whole kind of negative bad breath. So, yeah, oh, the leadership is getting narrow and narrow. And it shows, again, the international forces are more of a concern to investors sometimes than even Janet Yellen, what she had to say but, today in Wyoming. Yeah, but, what's your interpretation? But, but at the same time, this isn't like the dot-com bubble where you had one clear group rising so far above the rest. I mean, it's pretty hard to find bargains out there right now. Stocks yeah. look pretty fully priced across the board. I mean, it, it, it does kind of tell you, though, that it's very hard to pick the winners. I mean, if you see that it's it, not everything is participating, it makes you want to buy an index. I mean, I actually think there are going to be consequences from this zero interest rate policy. And one of them, I'm not going to claim it's asset bubbles, yeah. but I'm telling you that I don't think risk is being priced in properly. Uh, Yellen played it right down the middle, giving herself a lot of flexibility to keep the current uh, policies and rates low. But yeah. we are seeing demand for yield, and, and I think people are stretching for it. It's interesting to hear her trash talk the recovery, because it's the opposite <laughs> of what you hear out of Washington when she says, well, you know, the unemployment number may have gone way down, but it doesn't really reflect what's going on. I think, I think the, wages are really stagnant. I mean, she's saying exactly the opposite of what the president think, was I saying. The Fed's game is basically they, they view in inflation as relatively easy to fix and deflation as very difficult to fix, so they're going to err on the side of creating a little inflation. And look, she's, uh, still, that's scary. she's still very dovish in her. In, her, in fact, yeah. if, you, if you look at that, look what happened today. The under and over still is first quarter, second quarter, okay. the time they start raising rates. Stock market claiming its latest fashion victim, Arrow. Postal forecasting a wider loss for the current quarter, sending the stock plummeting. Um, you know, their new slogan is, we've changed. Apparently, they haven't. No. I mean, that's what the, the quarter tells you. Well, the, the business really has changed. You can't be this kind of company anymore where you have small scale. You come out with clothes once a season. You fill the shelves, and you hope to sell them. You've got to be this fast retailer with large scale, fast manufacturing, yeah. fast delivery, like Gap. Gap's the only big player in the U.S. that can play on the kind of scale that you need to be able to turn over merchandise quickly. Okay, what do you think? You know, the teenagers, that, that's the market here. Changing management's not going to do anything for it. You know, it's kind of, I have two teenagers. Teenagers and they speak really? the truth. They say, you know what? That was so yesterday. And that's what, yeah, that's the consent. So you can't really, like you said, you can't, yeah. you, got, you can't just reshelf and hope that they're going to buy. They're failing on two fronts. The teenagers uh, don't think it's cool, and the parents 
aren't satisfied with the pricing, so they rank they rank uh, poorly wow. on both fronts. Wow, so they're batting zero. Batting zero. Yeah, perfect. All right, the iPhone 6 facing yet another hurdle. Reports indicating that a flaw in the screen production could lead to dis delays and a limited supply. I mean, you got to have the screen. It's right. really <laughs> tough to produce right. and sell the phone yeah, well, so if you don't have the screen. That. I mean, if you look at the display for what, what Samsung has, this nice, lightweight OLED technology. Yeah. And Apple's still operating a couple years old, you know, with their, their technology, the light behind. So they're trying to make this thin, cool thing like Samsung, but yet they're still sticking with the old technology of, uh, of display screens. Hmm. What do you guys think? I, I expect a huge end of the year for Apple, but it is really contingent on this larger iPhone screen where there's outsized demand for it. So, you know, hopefully they'll be able to get this sorted out. Hopefully, because you can't ship the phone and say, we'll get you the screen later. <laughs> That's yeah. not going to work out. I, I yeah. thought it was really interesting. Go with the story was for the suppliers are trying to work with Apple. It's like you, you, you could lose by winning. You win their business, but their delays oh, and yeah. the tweaks and the changes, and all of a sudden you have a you have huge risk in your revenues coming from yeah. a source such as Apple. So. Okay, this is my favorite and most important story of the day. So everybody listen up. GoPro <laughs> known for its amped up extreme sports videos. But this is really more of our speed. Just call it the Dough Pro. A pizzeria employee attaching one of the fancy cameras to his pizza making tool. Okay, this is strangely hypnotizing. I watched it for, well, quite a while. I'm embarrassed to How say. How long is quite a and while? And I got to see, it, it, was, it was a while. And um, this is why I can't watch the cooking channel because I was starving. After watching it, the pizza looked delicious. You just follow pizza around and around. We were trying to figure out what pizzeria is. I think it's Pizza Hut. I mean, it's definitely, look at that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I am so still, good. I am still staring at the screen. Look, Maybe I know. Right. Maybe there is it is. Something it's hypnotizing. You guys aren't saying anything. It's completely it, hypnotizing. Is, is that now? Oh, delicious. Not so carb friendly. Mm. Though. Not so carb friendly. <laughs> oh, delicious. All right, thanks, guys. See, they were hypnotized. They didn't have anything to say about that. Is eBay about to prove Uncle Carl right? New reports the company might be going for a spin. Plus, who needs a chair anyway? Go ahead and get on up because now you can have a seat anytime, anywhere. More money coming up. I'm back. I'm back. Get up, bump that thing.